Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of our BPSO symposium. And we hope you had a fabulous day yesterday for all of those who are here and enjoy the workshops. Uh, we are celebrating over three days our global commitment to evidence-based practice cultures and 20 years of BPSO. And uh, okay, maybe a slight advancement here. Thank you. My name is Susan McNeil. I am delighted to support the hosting role for the symposium over the three days. And we have uh, an exciting day, jam-packed day, uh, prepared for you today. Uh, we have two plenary sessions. We have a keynote from Dr. Doris Grinspan very shortly. And then after lunch, we have, uh, we're introducing our new best practice, competency-based training and resources. So we're really delighted to share that with you as well. Uh, there are going to be uh, three opportunities throughout the day to look at your fabulous posters. And don't they look amazing, these posters? Yeah, they're so great. Um, so uh, a, a suggestion, if you haven't already done this, have someone take your, your photograph and post it on uh, social media or share it within your organization. There's so much for you to be proud of. On your tables, take a look at this. This is, it's got the QR code that will take you directly to the program uh, agenda here. And there have been some minor tweaks to the agenda, so make sure you've got the most up-to-date version. And then we've got our hashtags here as well, hashtag BPSO Symposium, and make sure you tag RNO so we can give that some legs. So I just mentioned that we've got the poster viewings, and then we have five session blocks. So in the agenda, find those time blocks, and there are several opportunities for you to choose from. And so what, for example, the first block, block one, is a 30-minute block. And we have actually six choices for you. So there are two rapid oral groupings and four concurrent sessions. So there's lots for you to to consider what interests you the most. And um, so please just check and make sure that you've got the most current version of the agenda. And uh, we have some of our colleagues from overseas or different time zones or who were not able to be here have been able to record some of their presentations. So some of those presentations they pre-recorded for you to enjoy. And we had a couple of questions yesterday about will, there's so, so much that people want to see, so will you be able to see some of those presentations that you you actually missed. So we will be reaching out to all of you to get permission to share that on the, the conference website, Indico. And uh, so once we get the go-ahead, we'll upload those and then you'll be able to access all, um, all or most of the presentations. So that can be there for a resource for you. So the agenda today is action-packed. And uh, so we have a couple of things to kind of keep to time. This is the little bell that I'll be ringing uh, on occasion to bring us back uh, to, to our sessions or help to move us along. And then look at these. We've got five minute cards, one minute cards, and a wrap up cards. So this will be to help urge you to kind of keep on track so that everyone gets a chance to be heard and present what they've worked really hard at uh, preparing for you today. And so, you know what I think we should do is I think that we should welcome all of those colleagues who are watching this live stream from afar. Well, from, from near and far, far away. So Mike Watson, Mike over there with the camera, Mike um, is live streaming this event right now. So why don't we give a warm, enthusiastic welcome and he'll do the mic. So, so Mike, you're going to start here and then move around. Okay, so just watch the camera and please give a warm, enthusiastic welcome to those. Oh my God. Thank 
Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike Watson from our IMT team. Um, and Ms. Arshan is also here today helping you to keep things on track. Speaking of our staff, could we have once again today our staff members who are here today stand up? Staff members have this blue ribbon, and we are here to help you. Look at our amazing staff. <laughs> Yeah, so we're here to help make this a smooth and positive experience for each and every one of you. A couple of other, I've got a long list of things to share with you. So let's talk about social outings. A reminder that we have two social items. Tanya, are you in the room? Tanya, okay, look at Tanya's there. Tanya, Tanya is taking the tour to Eaton Center this afternoon for anyone who wants. Now you're not. She's not going to go and and check out your outfits and and do the shopping. But she's just going to offer a tour for those of you who want to do uh, a little bit of shopping. And then Janet, she are you? You in the house, Janet Chi. Okay, so Janet Chi is going to be your guide for the Toronto sign at uh, at City Hall. Uh, so, now if you are uh, yesterday, I mentioned this, um, but I'll mention it again. If you are a budding tour guide and you have a special place that you want to take people to, tell me today, and I'll announce it at the end of the day. Okay, so we welcome that if you have a special place that you think is fabulous that everyone must see. Uh, so that's about an hour and a half. And then tonight, uh, for those of you who signed up for the dinner, it's going to be in this room. Now, um, some of you might not be sure if you signed up for the dinner or not. So look at the back of your tag, and there should be a, your name tag. And if you have a card, this is your dinner ticket. Mine is green, so I get the vegetarian option, and then there's also a purple option. So just double check that um, you have your ticket. Now, there are some people eager to attend who didn't get a chance to sign up, so we've got a wait list, and that's at the reception. So, if you are for some reason unable to attend, you signed up but you're not planning on attending, please let us know so that we can let those people on the wait list join the dinner. Okay? So we'd like everyone who is uh, wanting to join in that can. Uh, a couple of other things. So, have you signed the petition yet for fair and equitable compensation for nurses? Okay, well, if you have not yet signed the petition, at the reception desk we have the, uh, a petition there. We need actual signatures in pen on that petition. So please, we want to have everyone sign that petition, so please make sure you do so. Uh, a couple of fun things. Um, you might have already noticed that we have a tree that we want to grow today together with you. So uh, near the reception desk there is a tree and I think the question is how has BPSO helped you or your organization grow? And we've got little leaves and we want to have a full tree with lots and lots of leaves over the next couple of days. So please um, participate in, the, in making that tree look fabulous, okay? Another fun thing, we have a photo booth. So look at this, this is one of our props. Look, okay, so there's a, now you can choose two things. You can do a professional kind of photo with no props and, and take your picture with your colleagues or new colleagues. And uh, that's just over here. It's a film festival style photo booth. Or you can do, uh, you can use the props and get, do whatever you, you, you like to, um, to make that fun. So that is available for you. Uh, Victoria Alarcon over here, she's going to be taking photos, uh, professional photos throughout the day uh, so please um, feel free to ask Victoria to take your photos and then Raul Pinto our multi multimedia uh, guru and uh, wonderful um, videographer is going to be taking some some videos as well today and tomorrow in the morning our quiet room. You, if you need that quiet kind of space away from others um, to just kind of decompress, that's right here in the Varley room. Some people might want to use it for prayer or, or pumping breast milk, so that is uh, available for you today as well. Let's see, a couple of other things. Tomorrow, um, tomorrow we uh, have just heard confirmation that um, the Minister of Long-Term Care, 
Stan Cho is going to join us in the morning. So we're delighted to have that representative um, from, from our, our provincial government. And uh, so, so that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, another kind of logistics thing about tomorrow is your luggage. If you're here in, um, if you're here at the Hilton and you need to check out, you could either leave your luggage with the concierge or you can, I think we're going to put some luggage back maybe in that, in that corner tomorrow. So there are some places to keep that. I'm just going down through my checklist. I think I've said everything here. Um, so, so before, uh, let's just see the time check here. Doris, do you think we have uh, a minute to show a couple of... Okay, all the time. Great. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so, what we'd like... To, yes, we, we, we will. Yeah. So, let's just think back um, to the height of the pandemic and the intensity of the pandemic and think of where you were in your organization. Can those of you who actually started BPSO during the pandemic, could you please stand up? So wow. Will, so, so Doris is just saying to me, for those of you who are joining online, and there are many of you who also joined BPSO, and stay standing, those people who um, also joined BPSO during the pandemic. So we would invite you at home or at work for you to also stand up if you joined BPSO during the pandemic. So, yeah, please keep standing. So how about organizations who were actually designated? They graduated during the pandemic. Are there any of you in the room? Yeah, no, keep standing. Those of you who, who yeah, don't sit down yet. Yeah. Okay, so these are, these are BPSOs that actually were designated during the, the pandemic as well, who just joined this group. So the same people online, you can do that. Now what about organizations who stayed the course and maintained their designation through the BPSO, or through, through the pandemic? Who's, who's there here who've, who's done that? Okay, well let's have a huge round of applause for all of you. Now, I think, um, Kristen, you've got a microphone, and Patricia, you've got a microphone. So we'd like to hear just a few adjectives that you might have to say about being a BPSO during the pandemic, starting it, graduating, or maintaining the course. Just quickly, uh, put up your hand if you have an adjective that you want to say about. Yes, okay, we've got Luella, yeah. <laughs> Challenging but doable. Okay, Sarah. Resilient. Resilient. Exciting work. Exciting work. Maria. Different type of work, same work. Different type of work, same work. John V. Learn to be flexible. Learn to be flexible. Persistence. Persistence. Inspiring. Inspiring. Energizing. Energizing. Thank you. Thank you. Ever changing and adapting. Sue. Belief. 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 Can you just say a little bit more about belief, Sue? Sure. Um, where I'm from, we had a huge exodus of, of staff who were part of BPSO, and we were left with a very skeleton crew. And it was our myself and um, the director of patient care who j we just believe in this work so much that, you know, there were, there were days where we just thought, we, we can't do this, we can't do this, but we believe in it so much that we just kept going and we're almost at, uh, you know, end of year three and we're so proud of all the crazy work that we've been able to do, so we believed in it. Wow. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for those adjectives. Now we'd like to, um, oh, we've got oh, a couple more, sorry. Supportive. Thank you. Oh, one more for me. I feel like a Hercules. You know, remember all day Hercules holding the floor? What was the holding my organization? I, I didn't hear the word. 
What was the word? Hercules. Hercules. Oh. Okay. Holding the, holding the hand of Hercules. I feel like my uh, Hercules uh, during the pandemic that I'm holding the BBS floor in my organization, and it's like, go, 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 do it, do it, do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, Herculean effort. Thank you so much. Okay, wonderful. So I think we have time to play um, one or two videos uh, that, that highlight some of the BPSOs who didn't get a chance to be actually celebrated in person during the pandemic. So I think we're gonna show video one, and I think we've got time for video two as well. So please enjoy. Oh, sir, we're doing one video. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Video one, please, thank you. Shenard. I'm a registered nurse and clinical manager at Chicken Community Health Center. My name is Jessica Taboni. I am uh, the health policy analyst for the Ontario Native Women's Association and I'm also the BPSO project lead. Hi everyone, my name is Christina Ortolan and I am the manager, community development manager of health program in the Mindamoyan Health Clinic. We have a um, 11 sites. Um, 11 chapters and I think 21 councils within Ontario. Uh, hi, my name is Samara Anderson and I am the Indigenous Diabetes Education Coordinator here at Ottawa. Uh, Anin, hello. Uh, my name is Odeman McKay Losher. I'm an Anishinaabe registered midwife here at Seventh Generation Midwives uh, Toronto and I am the BPSO lead. My name is Kate McDonald. I am a non Indigenous settler midwife here at Seventh generation, and I've been here for about three years now, and I'm one of the co-leads with the BPSO. I would encourage all people that are working with RNA or BPSO to include themselves, involve themselves with all knowledge exchange groups. Become a champion. It opens doors for you. We're not just the teachers and we're not just the learners. Those things go hand in hand. We learn by doing and being involved. We have some elders actually on the calls often. Um, they're a great source of uh, encouragement, wisdom. Also um, joining in on those champion workshops is super helpful. We found um, as we were starting up as a clinic that a lot of the healthcare that's available in the area is very Western focused and doesn't take into account um, the traditional ways of our Indigenous people and the holistic way that they live their lives and we thought it was important that the care that we're providing and that we're offering reflects their needs the most. The Aneo BPSO designation is a widely recognized mark of quality and commitment to evidence-based care provision, one that every member of our team can take pride in helping to achieve and to live out the day-to-day practice. Through implementing the RNAO best practice guidelines for perinatal Indigenous women, We've been able to ensure that nobody fell through the cracks. Clients and community members have access to culturally relevant, holistic programs and services within a respectful and inclusive environment. And we are also looking forward to being a part of the next BPSO stage as a designation. 
Part of the um, draw to the best practice um, guidelines in the BPSO program is being able to build that relationship with the mainstream healthcare system through the RNAO and be able to um, both um, kind of standardize some of our practices while also looking to inform nursing best practices um, based on what we know over the past you know, 50 years of our organization. Some of the things that we are really proud of is the collaboration that we did as within an organization that brought a lot of files together and helped build a really strong health file. And the fact that we were able to take this best practice and roll it out within our organization first in a good way. So we, we approached our staff for feedback, for um, focus groups. We brought in elders to help us. We um, we did some like traditional naming and and got advice from like um, a forum of people. And I think that um, that really helped us be successful. Um, and to start having those difficult conversations. Like not a lot of people like to talk about that and now we're doing it within all of our programs. Something you need to aim to achieve with the BPSO work is the opportunity to have a community level impact by supporting whole families rather than just the pregnant person. Also the idea of working with and learning from an interdisciplinary group uh, that we more often just work in parallel with is a great opportunity. You know, we're really able to think critically about what we're doing well and where we can make changes to better provide to the community. The project that we're really excited about is um, incorporating nicotine replacement therapy into our clinic, which is something we don't currently do. And I think it's something that can really make a big impact um, pretty quickly in our community here. Be creative, think out of the box. That's what we had to do when we approached this and it worked really well. Adjust and um, pivot when you need to, to make it make sense for you and your context. I feel that where San Diego is, uh, is proof, anybody can do it, anybody can accomplish. And I hope we continue to move forward. to Grace and Tanya and Brenda for supporting the Indigenous BPSOs. Uh, so I would like to turn things over to our esteemed CEO, Dr. Doris Grinspun, and I'd actually like to read you her bio because when I reread it, I thought, this is amazing. This woman we are um, so fortunate to have um, leading the way. So Dr. Doris Grinspun is Chief Executive Officer of the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, the professional association representing registered nurses, nurse practitioners, and nursing students in the province of Ontario, which is Canada's largest jurisdiction. Arneo's mandate is to advance healthy public policy and the role of registered nurses and nurse practitioners. Grinspan assumed this position in 1996. She is the founder and visionary of RNO's internationally renowned Best Practice Guidelines Program, and BPSO, and leading figure in Canadian and international health and nursing policy. Over three decades, Grinspan has led many international programs in Latin and Central America, China, Australia, and Europe. Having published and spoken extensively in Canada and abroad, she is a forceful advocate of Canadians, or Canada's universal health system and the contribution of registered nurses and nurse practitioners to its success. Her expertise is in the areas of health, healthcare, and nursing, and isn't that true? Grinspan appeared frequently in the media at, at the Ontario Legislature, advancing nursing, health, and social policy and evidence-based practices. She has been featured in major new media outlets and publications for her bold, compelling, and visionary leadership. The widely influential author of 250 plus articles, book chapters, and a groundbreaking book about the evolution of RNAO's BPG program, she has delivered over 450 presentations and keynotes, received over 60 award and awards and investitures, and participated in, guess that, get this, over 10,000 media interviews. So, what a remarkable woman and leader, and welcome, Dr. Hope. You know, um, awards, uh, and I say it always, 
and I hope that those of you that get awards think in the same way, are only good if you use them to speak more boldly, courageously, and driven by values. So sign the petition, that's one. Sign also the action alert that we sent yesterday, telling uh, Premier Ford to stop saying that schools are indoctrinating kids about LGBT. Sign it. Because as one MPP said yesterday in CP24, uh, being gay, lesbian, trans is not contagious. She really put it right. So whoever has fear, based on whatever that drives that fear, get hold of yourself and let others live in peace. Diversity in this country is precious. And if you don't believe me, then look what's happening in the US. We don't want that here. So awards, Susan, are good, and only for use them to speak driven by values and by courage. And so is evidence, and that's what we are here to speak today. And in the process, I'm going to name many of you, but I actually want to start by asking our team at RNO. Uh, I want to, all of you, including Mike, who is at the mic there, at the, at the video there, uh, and others, whoever is more than 10 years at RNO and works at RNO, please stand up and stay standing, please. Whoever is more than 10 years at RNO. And of course, we have Angela that is outside and Sitlali and many others. Kudos to you. Whoever is at RNO more than five years, stand up. And this is only one team, eh? Victorita, how long are you? Eight years, here you go. Whoever, now you see it, thank you. And whoever is less than two years, stand up, please. Here you go. Thank you. If you were to go to Arenio and ask the entire staff, I started with the staff of 16 people, and we have over 100 today, 110. Um, of course, uh, many of them, of, this, of those 17 even, some of them are still there, and uh, others are almost from the beginning. Kim Jarvis just retiring after 24 years. So if you know good economists, we are hiring. Uh, but we got already 45 CVs, so here you go, for every position we post. Uh, sadly enough, also for any nursing position we post. And I say sadly because people, uh, it's great that they want to come to Arenio, but it's very sad that they want to leave also wonderful places uh, of work because um, they're exhausted. So, not that already know you don't work hard, you do, but I think you get the recognition and you get the space to do the amazing work that you are hearing today and, and yesterday and in the days ahead. Um, hashtag, please, BPSO, and the other one, BPSO Symposium, please, put it on, X, tweet, whatever you want to call it, tag us along, and whoever tweets excess or however we want to call that new, that new name, um, more, I'm going to have a prize for you. So here you go. Three prizes, whoever does most throughout the convention, throughout the symposium, will get something interesting. I didn't say something expensive, interesting. <laughs> Maybe I will get your dinner with the premier and you can tell him directly how to improve the system. Uh, we are going to review a bit uh, for those of you that are less familiar uh, with Arrhenio. Let's have people that are not in the nursing profession uh, stand up. Anyone that is not in the nursing profession, thank you. I do want for us to acknowledge you. The program is for everybody. Yes, for once, nursing is leading a program. Trust me, through the years, they very much try to take the program and say, why is not with, 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 with whoever organization? 
because for once nursing is living for everybody with you, for you, most importantly for patients. So it is the professional association for registered nurses, nurse practitioners, and nursing students in Ontario. It is a powerful, and I don't shy away, and thoughtful voice. It is not a dogmatic voice. It is a voice that uses wisdom and uses evidence and is driven by values and by courage to speak out on important issues. We do not take from a policy perspective nothing that is not important. That's for others to do. We take the most difficult issues. I mentioned uh, next to Grandmother Dorothy when we were thanking her uh, that we were at the rally of the environment, climate change. If you think it's not real, also get a hold of it because it's coming to your home next. You saw the fires, I don't need to tell you. And it's real. And whoever that goes through life not thinking about that, and it's not the personal, it's not just turning the lights and all that stuff. That will help, but not enough. It's pushing governments to do the right things, both federally and provincially. And it's knowing for who you vote when you need to vote. And then, of course, the evidence-based practice program, the VPG program, which started in 1997 with the proposal of a very young nurse that had dreams in her head, had brought those dreams to Sinai when I was director of nursing, and they thought, what got in her head now? But then RNO called me, and here you go, brought it to RNO, and look what we are doing. Look what we are doing collectively. People can have dreams. Any of you can have all kinds of dreams for your family, your friends, your community, yourself, aspirations, professionally, personally. But if you don't have a team, a team at home, a team at work, a team in your community, nothing gets accomplished. And you are the community. And those that are online all over the world are the community. Those of you that were in ICN, 37 presentations, 14 from home office, all the others from BPSOs all over the world. That's a movement. That's a movement that we have created together for you, with you, for the people that we take care. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters. And yes, it's measuring outcomes, and it's also how we go about moving this movement of social science that we have built together. So that's the VPG program. And together, those two programs intertwine many times. We intertwine policy with BPGs. For example, on the, is on the issue of substance use, right? We push it through policy, we push it through BPGs. On the issue of pressure injuries, pressure injuries too. We have done it. Um, the little devices to release pressure, right? When you have a little wound, the only province that covers the cost of it is Ontario. And it's because our new and Wound Canada push for that together. Based on the VPG, I had Wound Canada coming and saying, do you know that we do not cover in Ontario and for that matter in Canada for offloading devices, devices that cost at the time $120 versus an amputation, $70,000. And so together, First, always in the good, always with a text to the premier of the day. At that point was um, another premier and was uh, Dr. Herring Hoskins was the, the minister. Nothing happened. So next, we brought patients with amputations to Queen's Park. Based on evidence, courage, and yes, they delivered. Ontario is the only province, shamefully in Canada, that covers for offloading devices, right? But we are willing in this universal healthcare system that we have to cover for an amputation. Does it make sense? No. So evidence, yes, but dressed by values, driven by values, and mobilized through courage. If not, nothing happens. 
RNO as an entity influences, informs, advocates, connects, protects, and inspires. Recently, and tragically, I lost to cancer a very close friend of mine, and I'm dedicating this speech to her, Vanessa Burkowski. And Vanessa, at one point, many of you know, needed legal protection. She spoke with courage, and she was fired. And then she got an even better job, as I said in the eulogy. So yes, we also provide coverage, legal coverage to people. Because when you have courage, you need to be able to be protected by your professional association. RNO's programs overall, all of them, whether it's policy, whether it's practice, whether it's advocacy, the goal is to support the achievement of the quadruple aim. Okay? Good outcomes, good patient experience, lowering cost, and nothing shameful about that, because when you prevent falls, when you prevent pressure injuries, of course you lower costs. That's a good lowering of cost, vis-a-vis -vis cutting staffing for no good reason. And then, of course, also meaningful work to retain staff so they know their work is important. But we do that with the ring around, and the ring around is the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Why? Because it's very different to take care of a person in the streets of any one of the cities you live versus the mansions that very few live. It's very different. And the evidence can be the same, but when social determinants of health or environmental determinants of health right, target some people more than others, some countries more than others, then it's very different how you use the evidence because then you need to assert, assert your values and courage as much as you assert the evidence. I want to speak for a minute about the in focus. I address one issue, which is 2SLGBT, Q+, and there is another one that Dion Sinclair, I don't know if Dion is here, gave yesterday a magnificent workshop on EDI. And of course, Susan and others have been speaking about the work that my colleagues in indigenous communities do. That is what our know is focused from a perspective of EDI. Three key populations, black nurses, consistently and constantly discriminated in this country of mine. Whether it's professional organizations, unions, workplaces, everywhere. And Dion spoke yesterday about intentionality. And let me tell you, she's right. Intentionality on what you do and how you do it. And we can all use the excuse, but the person was not prepared enough. The person didn't have the CV enough, etc., etc., etc. That might be right, but the person also didn't have the same circumstances to get all those credentials that some of us have. But sometimes you also find pearls, pearls that have not only the EDI aspect of expertise, also the knowledge, the expertise that will drive things forward. That's where we need to strive together and open opportunities in our schools, our universities, everywhere. So every black nurse or nurses of other communities that are disadvantaged can get those credentials, can get those scholarships, can get those supports to succeed and to thrive. Go to the in focus, please. Look at what we are doing. And yes, continue to focus on BPGs, but please push also those other aspects in your own workplaces. You can look at the AGM reports and you will see the magnificent work that the association has achieved through its members, through its staff, through courageous boards, through the assembly of leaders in terms of change through unity and action. 
Yes, we can have many different views, but when we push together as one unique force, no one can stop us. And yes, the minister then is coming on Friday, because no one can stop us. And a colleague said to me yesterday, I'm not going to embarrass her, when Doris takes the minister or the premier, then jump, well, better they do. 20 years of BPSO celebration, 20 years of this magnificent work of social movement. And next year is 25 years of the BPG program. You know, when I was writing that proposal, I cannot forget it because my mother was in the last weeks of her life and I was taking care of her in another country. And I was at nights writing the proposal and then sending the proposal. And it was Elizabeth Whitmer, and we always need to remember that opened the doors to that first funding with the premier that I cannot say I got very well uh, together, Premier Harris, um, but she opened the doors and look where we are today. She just wrote to me at the AGM to again congratulate us and to say how proud she was of what we had done together. And also Premier McGinty, who increased the funding, said to me one day over coffee after he had uh, left the position for many years, he said, you know, Doris, how is that program going? And I said, it's going great, it grew, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, you know, Doris, how many times the program saved my skin in other countries? When people were saying, and what's Canada doing for us? And what's Ontario doing for us? And he said, well, do you know about this program of the nurses? So please know that the program not only helps here at home, not only helps nurses and other health professionals abroad, it also helps politicians. And when they see the results that they're seeing in any country, it is not surprising that in Chile today, the entire Ministry of Health, many of them, are watching this. And that they have put six people dedicated in that country to move the program forward and are furthering it across all sectors. And it is not surprising that the same is happening in China, kudos to Lash and many others, and it's happening <laughs> and it's happening in other countries around the world. Here is the success and growth of the VPG and BPSO program across the years. Starting with a few VPGs, you need to know the first person that I hired for the program and was one. Remember, I didn't have anything. Just a check from the government and no idea no idea, except of views in my head of where we were going, was Tazim Virani. And she recently tweeted how proud she was of where we were with the program. And then Irma Jean Bainok, whom you know, and then Heather, who is here, and then several other colleagues that work with them that I will mention as we go along. But those are the leaders that move this program forward with me, yes, but they did the heavy lifting of it. And many people that participated on VPGs. So starting with a few VPGs out in 201, to then seven VPSOs in 203, seven VPSOs. Any of the, of the founding VPSOs here? Is Sainz Elise or any of the founding VPSOs here? Okay. Next time that we do a big celebration, we need to have at least one rep of those big BPSOs, but they're all very active, we know that. And of course, then it continues. But what's so good about this program is not only that it continues, but the various teams keep the program ahead of the game. What's very successful about the program is how much we are on the cutting edge in all the domains of the program, and I will speak about that. A key point during the program was the, um, a, a woman called Maite Moreno, Dr. Maite Moreno, who recently got an honoris causa, 
and I hop in a plane, took vacation, bought my ticket, and went to celebrate her. That woman opened the doors to the Spanish-speaking world because she works in the Ministry of Health in Spain, and they are the ones that translate the guidelines to Spain to Spanish. So key point there uh, about 11 years ago. Our vision, very simple. Nothing has changed, but very ambitious. Yes, one thing has changed that we added internationally. Did people ask me, did I think that this will become this massive, massive, massive international endeavor? The truth is, I didn't even think if yes or not, neither did I care. Because what I cared is that the program delivers results for Ontarians. That was the funding. The rest came only because the program delivers results. Because for many years I didn't want us to share the program internationally. Because we needed first to prove that it really delivers the results that are worth of sharing with others. So yes, transforming care through knowledge locally, nationally, and internationally. And we are. Three key buckets or three key pillars to the program from the first day that we started the program. Because one thing I knew, and that I knew because of Sinai. When I was at Sinai, WHO asked me to develop a program on evidence-based practice for rehab. That's my clinical expertise. And of course, it was on the area of um, rehabilitation of people with brain injuries, which is my area, and they wanted BPGs and centers of excellence for families and patients with, um, with a post-traumatic head injury. And what happened is that Doris helped them develop BPGs, not as sophisticated as this, but we did a pretty good job. But I never thought about so what happens if the leadership, and what happened if, and what happened if, and the program was going magnificently, and in two countries they changed the leaders and the program fell flat in his head. So when then I did this at RNO, I said, mm -mm, no more, needs to have three buckets, right? It needs to have the bucket of the guidelines, the implementation with a robust, robust process, and evaluation, and that's what you see today. So in the area of development, I am not going to give you a whole lecture on that because this, this program takes four days to train people, right? Those of you that do the full training of champions in places that do a full training, it is. When I do that in other countries, I lead the Latin, all the Spanish speaking, Spain and Latin America and Central America. It's four days of intense training for going through, uh, to go through the entire process. And here, sometimes it's done in different chunks, right? But it's a long, long process and uh, it's a very important one. Guideline development today is led by Nafsin, by Amy. I don't know if Nafsin is on Matliv. I don't know if Amy is here. And by Lindsay. I don't know if Lindsay is here. And if you are, please stand up. With panels of experts, tremendous, tremendous expertise in developing guidelines, in systematic reviews, in leading panels, these are all master prepared people and GLINIS who supports them like nobody else. Tremendous expertise for GLINIS too. We use, of course, GREAT and GREAT CIRQUAL to qualify the recommendations, right? GREAT for quantitative, GREAT CIRQUAL for qualitative. And we use the agree tool to evaluate first if there are other guidelines, but also to follow that our guidelines actually meet the international standards of rigor. This is why the guidelines are being used everywhere, because they do use the rigor that internationally is required. And we have produced over 50 guidelines, and we have them organized in nine domains. And you can get them all for free in the website 
in various languages. And the issue, the, 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 the value of being for free cannot be underestimated because it is being able to be used then everywhere in the world and in all organizations. In June, we issued the second edition. It's not a new BPG, but it's a second edition of the guideline on transitions in care and services. And that guideline is a guideline where we, we have health systems of care involved in developing. In Ontario, called Ontario Health Systems, health teams in other countries. They have different names for health systems of care, from public health to primary care to hospital care to home care to long-term care, all the sectors, health systems of care. But the beauty is that that's why it's called transition in, in also services, because it's also social services, right? Here we go again to the issue of social determinants of health. Tremendously important guideline. And look at the pictures. You can see the eye live. We, we are very intentional in what we say, what we do, and how we act. Clinical practice in a digital, digital health environment is coming soon, hopefully, if the slides come back to, is coming soon. And that guideline will be dedicated to Vanessa. Why? Because it was Dr. Burkowski's idea, this guideline. And in fact, Humber River Hospital provided half of the funding for it. So it is the intersection between health professionals, nurses and others, and the digital world. Right? You heard Dr. Shanoya Nick, is Shanoya here? And her tremendous presentation yesterday, I heard she needed extra chairs. Um, that is the world of deep machine learning, artificial intelligence, analytics, predictive analytics, and how health professionals use it in the interaction with patients, residents, the people that we care. Persons, persons like you and I, that we put all kinds of titles, right? Some of them even don't graduate to the title. I mean, at least in a nursing home, they're all called residents. In a hospital, these so-called patients not always graduate because they don't get even a diagnosis sometimes, right? But those are the people that we care about in this guideline, the people that we take care of or that we participate in their journey of health and illness. In the implementation, Susan, you have heard her, and she's shining as a star on area of implementation science with the whole team of people. Who is here involved in the implementation science team from the staff perspective? Stand up, please. So Susan and her team, here you go. Congratulations. Stand up, Grace. Don't shy away, Grace. You are there, too. Amazing, amazing team with amazing stars that are at your service helping you. Three levels of intervention from the beginning, individual, organizational, and system. So individual is the champions program that does clinical fellowship and Christine Medeiros, you must be here, here you go. If you want to know about advanced clinical fellowships, talk with Christine, Dr. Christine Medeiros, because she is the star leading that program uh, with Erica, and I don't know if Erica is here, her support. And then, of course, in organizational is the BPG, BPSO movement, right? And Angela, one star, Tanya, another star, and many others that work with the specific programs. And then system level, where you have the OHTs, but in the system level, you also have the program of Grace, Tanya, and Brenda for indigenous people, stand up. The program with Janet Chi, I don't know if Janet is here, for long-term care. And of course, I mentioned yesterday also Sabrina Morali and her team on mental health and substance use. And there are other programs, but we cannot go through each one of them. The goal of the VPSOs, when I first called Tazim, who was kind of a bit, 
what is she up to now telling me about this? About Tazim, we have these VPGs. Honestly, they look very good, but we have no clue if they work. Let's create some lab type of thing. And I said to her, let's create something that we can test these VPGs. And some of the organizations right, also were asking, how do we know that they work? This is how we created the best practice spotlight organization program. And this pin that says VPSO actually was the invention of Tazim and her team, her team of one at the time. You see, now they have big, big, big teams. And that was the expansion of Madame uh, Irma Jean Bainock. She was an expansionist. This is why we needed her to retire. She always wanted more and more and more stuff. At least Heather is more thoughtful on that, right? <laughs> because if not, they will take over RNO, right? Kind of, they are already. They are half of the, of the organization. And so we created the VPSO. And the VPSO is basically to encourage, to teach, to ensure that we move the uptake and sustainability of evidence right in the right way. Or as my colleagues teach me in a good way, as indigenous people teaches us in a good way. And this is why we are also partnering with Maxine and others to really look what other ways are there for implementing BPGs in BPSOs. We have different type of BPSOs, and I'm going to test you now. So who is here, uh, let's start with the most difficult. Who is here a BPSO OHT? Stand up. Who belongs to a BPSO OHT? Stand up. Okay. Maxine, what type of VPSO HD are you? Here you go. Over there? Awesome. And over there? Here you go. So, amazing. Several of the OHDs are here. Thank you. Who is a VPSO specialty? I know there is one. Montfort. Where is Montfort? BPSO specialty. Okay, other BPSO specialty, I see them in front of me. Universal care, long-term care, right? I mentioned yesterday. Who is BPSO direct? Who is BPSO direct? Okay, here you go, congratulations. And who is a different type of BPSO, academic BPSO? Academic BPSOs, stand up. Here you go, congratulations, thank you. And many more coming because we launched with Susan a consortium for VPSOs and we have many in Latin America. In fact, I am going to Chile to, to enjoy the graduation of five VPSOs academics and so forth. The beauty of the program is that we have evolved them as the system needs and that is called purposeful evolution. You know, you, you start a program and it's all in the book, and I hope we brought books for people and they should take them if, yes? And if not, we should bring tomorrow <coughs> and people can take them. But the reality is purposeful evolution means you move a program as the needs come, right? And you know when to push and you know also when to restrain program so that people don't stay all behind, right? So it's called purposeful evolution, intentionality. And that's what we did. We started with directs, then we created BPSO's host. Who is a BPSO host? Many here are BPSO host. Where is Where are the BPSO hosts that have other BPSO's direct under them? I know there are many in other countries, but here you go again, yes. Right? Um, and we created that actually because of Spain. Because the provinces in Spain called Comunidades Autonomas, they were complaining to the fe their federal government that they were not moving fast enough. So the ministers locally wanted to move faster 
and that's why we created BPSO's host and then of course other parts of the world are using it. That's again the beauty of the program. We, we, are, we, are, we don't still, we work together in evolving the program, right? These pins, these pins started actually in Colombia and I came back and I said to the team, how is it that all these people in Colombia have pins and we have no pins. Well, pins were invented because we can't stay behind, right? And then one day I called an organization and I said, do you know that in Spain they have an icon for the Twitter? And the person said, oh, we are going to have that too. And they had an icon the next day. We learn from one another in a good way and we move the program together. 20 years of celebration of BPSOs around the world, in many countries, and more to come. 20 years of celebration. The Global BPSO Network, and you can look at the QR code there, is growing significantly and will continue to grow because we will enable that through different people in different countries, and it is to be shared and it is also to be cherished, two important words. To be shared with everybody and to be cherished and maintain the integrity of the program. Because if we allow the program to be done in any way, anywhere, then it's not a program anymore. But when people keep what is called fidelity on a program, it means, yes, they are adjusting aspects of the program, but the fidelity of the program continues. So when you measure, you know that you are measuring the same program and the impact of the same program in different countries with different contexts. The beauty is that in any country, with any VPG that we have implemented, there are outcomes in any country and with any VPG if they actually use that VPG and if they implement through social movement, right, and through knowledge to action with the tools that Arena provides, and if they measure, measuring the same, of course, indicators. Go to the websites. The team has developed a magnificent new website and go there and you will see amazing, amazing information. The VPSO methodology is tremendous because it provides all that an organization at home and abroad needs to succeed. What should be the infrastructure? What should be the support system? What should be the reporting? Etc., etc., etc. Implementation toolkits. You only are focused on the leading on the leading uh, change toolkit with the two models of social movement action and knowledge to action. But there are other toolkits. There is the toolkit for mental health and substance use. There is the toolkit for primary care. There is a toolkit for integration of PPGs in the academic world, etc. Look at all of them. You will enjoy them. And of course, the social movement Action Framework is a unique contribution of RNO and its BPSOs to the social science, to the implementation science. And I don't know how many of you heard about Helen Vivan, someone that is worth following. She's an implementation scientist, one of the most well-known one, not only for evidence in in uh, BPGs because she's not, that's not her field. Her field is evidence and change in healthcare in general. But she tweeted about us. She said, finally, someone is using social movement for evidence uptake and sustainability. And the work was done with an international panel, also people from home. May, are you here? May Tao was in the panel. Kudos May. Others that were in the panel, Susan was in the panel. I, any other from here? I know Jesus Bujalanga must be online. He was in the panel. Uh, who? Catherine. Catherine, where is Catherine? I don't see her. I was going, she, 
Okay, she's here, but not here. In any case, uh, Catherine, I was going to mention her because not only she was in the panel, she actually is the one that did a lot of the systematic reviews, a lot of what we on the panel ask to do. And she developed much, much, much of the content with the panel, but did, she did really the heavy lifting on that toolkit. And of course, I need to mention Janet Squires, who was my co-chair for that panel. She's Professor Janet Squires from University of Ottawa, a full professor at a very young age. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Very involved with the program. Champions, all of you are really the ones that live, that give life to this program. Without champions, there is no program. It's like without BPGs, there is no program. Without champions, there is no program. So here you have some of the champions. Uh, champions uh, that uh, push implementation everywhere in the world. More champions, this is in Qatar. More champions, here you go. Tremendous, tremendous groups of champions everywhere in the world. Ontario champions. More Ontario champions. More Ontario champions. And I need to talk about the ones in the middle there. So are the ones in the middle there here? Well, half of it is here, stand up. So um, they come and chat with me. We were chatting yesterday, and you know, we are chatting about professionally and the work that they do at Sea Kids. And she's doing work, and he's doing work, and they are doing work, and it's all about VPSOs. Um, the gentleman on, on the right there is actually the VPSO lead. Uh, she's in professional practice, and all of a sudden she goes, I better go home because the kids are waiting. And I go, what age are the kids? So she shares the age of the kids. And I go, I don't know how, why. I go to the guy and I go, and you have kids too? Uh, and he, because he said I need to go home too, so you have kids too? And he goes, yeah, they are the same kids. <laughs> I go, oh my gosh, do we produce in this program? <laughs> I mean, I knew we produced because of Arenio, because half of my team keeps being on maternity leave, right? And we need to post more positions, bring more people, right, Heather? They keep having kids. In fact, I'm not going to talk, this was not Heather, but one of her predecessors, not to be named, right? Said, Doris, you need to do something with the water here because I can't handle this anymore. In any case, I said, you don't do that in HR. Don't, 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 don't say that. Plus, we like kids and we like families, so forget it, I go. In any case, so we know we produce, but here we go. Champions making championitos. <laughs> And it's very fitting because in Chile, where I'm going in October, they have, it's called mascotas. Mascotas, you know, is these little toys, uh, fluffy toys that you have. The mascotas, they have championes mascotas, championitos mascotas. Now these people have real life championitos. <laughs> now that is something else. And I also wanted to share about Dion bringing to the program a very strong focus on EDI, but also I wanted to mention Dion because she brought back the program to KMH. And that is courage, and that is evidence, and that's values. So kudos to her if she's here, and if not, please tell her. <laughs> Love you. Um, and of course we have also, right? Our colleagues that we have already spoken a lot about them, the indigenous focus, uh, BPSOs, and uh, Grace, Tanya, Brenda, and all the indigenous focus BPSOs, whether you are OHD or direct, please stand up. I want to say a couple of words about you. Stand up, please. Any BPSO that is indigenous focus, please stand up, and the staff too, Grace, I see you. You think I don't see you, I see you. And, where is, and any other 
because I spoke about um, the quadruple aim, and I also spoke about the ring around, right, the UN goals, and I said the delivering evidence in a community that is well-to-do is different than delivering evidence in other communities. And you deserve special kudos, because we do know that it's more difficult. We do know it requires more effort. And we are so uh, delighted with the work you're doing. So Jimmy Witch, please. <laughs> Australia, also doing amazing work. China, doing amazing work. Chile, doing amazing work. In fact, it's one of the largest programs in Chile today. Colombia, doing amazing work. In Colombia and in Chile, there are BPSO hosts, several. There is a BPSO host for all the public sector hospitals, and there is a BPSO host for academic organizations. Jamaica, I saw my colleagues from Jamaica. Stand up, please. Thank you for coming. Amazing. Now, this lady, this lady enabled me, thank you, to rest in one of the ICNs. So this was a few years ago. I come to the booth, and she is, that's it. She's taking care of everything. She's talking with everybody. I sat, I took off my shoes. I had a so relaxed time, and she did all the work, amazing work you are doing also in your university and everybody else there. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Philippines, any of our colleagues in Philippines from Philippines here? Also, they are doing amazing work, and we're in touch with them, both in the hospital and the university. And Montfort is Switzerland here, maybe online. So Montfort is a VPSO direct of Montfort Hospital. Thank you very much for leading the way there. And they had other VPSO directs, but we wanted to mention that uh, that takes special effort. So thank you. Thank you very much. Merci. Uh, and I know we have a whole table. Stand up. Stand up, colleagues in Turk and Caicos. Stand up, please. Now, you need to know that when they signed the agreement, everybody, everybody wanted to be your coach. And, and, and I go, well, OK, I can't be. I already have too much anyways. So can't do that. So here you go. Uh, beautiful place, beautiful people, beautiful work. Thank you. My colleagues in Spain, and at the middle is Dr. Teresa Moreno. Um, when we signed the agreement, and Minister Matthews at the time, uh, we had a big event at Arenio with all the Spanish-speaking countries, and Minister Matthews said, over a million people are going to take care because Ontario's nurses are doing this program. And that's when we sign the agreement with Spain that they will translate and do, we would do BPSOs there. Qatar, colleagues in Qatar, and Heather has been in Qatar, who is, OK, stand up, stand up. Amazing, amazing to see you here. Fantastic work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, champions around the world, building this amazing, incredible social movement of science. Capacity building and improving outcomes everywhere. But to improve outcomes, you also need to learn more and more about methodology. And this is where I think that we are so um, privileged, but also so visionary. And no, it's not only me that is visionary, Susan, this was you, not me, that decided that we need actually to teach the competencies to develop the champions. That was not good enough to say we need champions, we need methodology, we have the leading edge toolkit that we envision together, the social movement toolkit, but that actually 
people needed to have real competencies to teach. Not something that is done even in faculties, right? Like we take teachers, we take new faculty, not always we train new faculty how you teach. We assume they join as faculty and everybody knows how to teach. This is what this will do to the program. We'll take it yet another level. So I don't know if Javier Punya is here. Javier is here. So Javier, and, and you're working with Catherine, right? in developing the competencies, and they're doing a workshop, I understand, today. And you will see the beginning of this program at your service, with tools in the website that people at the office in different departments help them develop, that will be there for everybody to use. So that's today at 1.15 for all of us. And for sure, I'm not going to miss it, because it's amazing. And here is the story. You can have, and you must have, in a program like this, robust VPGs, which we spoke at the beginning. Because if they're not robust, what people that will do capacity building will teach is garbage. So we do have robust VPGs. I spoke about them, right? They follow a grid tool. They use great and great circual. They have teams of experts, both at home, meaning at home office, and the panels. And they do work that is to be proud of. And we have implementation scientists that work with champions to teach them through new competencies and the competencies they all bring to actually practice and implement the BPGs in a good way. But then you need to evaluate. And here is what is so fascinating, because we haven't discovered half of it yet. What's fascinating is that I know for a fact, and I have spoken with Dr. Shanoya, that after a year, just one year, all the VPGs produce outcomes. Doesn't matter which VPGs. So we know we are doing something right which is the VPGs are strong and the implementation science is strong. But when we will get to what we are doing now, which is the next steps for the program, with deep machine learning, and we are already doing homework on that, and with artificial intelligence, what we will be able to learn, and this is absolutely inspiring, is practices bottom up. It's evidence bottom up. To do a study, right, for those of you that do research, me included, and publish, it takes, takes a long time, relatively speaking. With artificial intelligence, when you build it into the system of inquiry, you start to have, it's a scavenger. Like, it's like, you know, it's like raccoons. Raccoons with the garbage, except that here, I don't think Shanoya will like this comparison, but, but I think it's a good one, you know? This is like good raccoons with good garbage. <laughs> Imagine that, wouldn't that be good if we didn't have those raccoons and we had these ones? And they pick, right, the evidence. And we will learn bottom up. We will learn evidence from practice to theory. And then we will see does it make sense. And that will allow us to have faster faster impact on outcomes, because I mentioned yesterday Perly Rido that doesn't use side rails. We learn by chance. One of the staff at RNO came to me, this is years ago, and said, do you know that side rails down, not just a bit low, but side rails down reduces injuries after a fall? I said, no, I didn't, but it makes sense, you know? I'm a rehab nurse, and I know what patients do, right? They hop through the side rail, boom, they fall, they break a hip. So it makes sense to me. How do you know that? I mean, I know you're smart, but did you do some other things that let you know? She said, yes, I look at the system and what the system is showing. And this was without artificial intelligence, without deep machine learning. So imagine, right? Since then, we are teaching side rails down, bed low side rails down. 
because it prevents. Patients still may fall. Patients still may fall, right? But they don't break a bone, which is what hurts both the person and the budgets. So the evaluation pillar is critical, and we have a tremendous, tremendous team. I don't know if Kyle is here, but Kyle leads Enquire with Shanoia, and Angela helps, and many others that are involved with them, Ian and others. It is the system to evaluate the uptake of and the impact of evidence-based clinical and healthy work environment BPGs in persons, organizations, and health systems. And at this point, so Enquire was launched in 2012. They also tried to steal it from me, by the way. They didn't try to steal it. One of the universities said to me, this belongs in a university. I say, exactly why? In any case, no, it didn't go to a university. It stayed with us because it needed to stay with us. And I will speak about this a little bit at the end, why it needed to stay with us. But it's your system to measure your outcomes. You can draw from there your reports, and it's producing results. So Enquire gives you, first of all, there is Enquire and my VPSO. Enquire, you enter data, my VPSO, you tell your narratives. And together, we help you with what's called rapid learning and continuous quality improvement. And the outcome of the VPGs are there for you. For, for you to use with your board of directors, for you to use with the media, for you to use in posters, in presentations, in publications. Most importantly, for you to use back with stuff. That's what, if one thing you need to remember is the data that you see on Enquire, you need to sit with the frontline staff, nurses, PSWs, and any others, so they know the impact of their work on outcomes. Because we know that when you give feedback to people, is when they improve the outcomes. And, and they, it reinforces practice. And we know that otherwise they feel used. They do the work, but they never hear what happens. So it is critical that on every staff meeting, at least five minutes be dedicated for them to see. And not always will be better. Sometimes it's not. But Enquire also allows you to do annotations. So it's not a box that you don't know what's happening. You can see what happened. Maybe there was a flu season, maybe there was change in staffing, maybe change in leadership, or maybe change in leadership is needed, et cetera, et cetera. And you will see the outcomes, and you need to share them. And we have the evidence boosters and a whole manual for you to develop your own, your own evidence boosters to show to everybody. I said that I will share, and this is how I will end, with telling you why the program needed to be at RNO, and why all its aspects, including Enquire, needed to be at RNO. Location for a program is critical, whether it's your organizations or a professional association. And that's what Heather, Susan, and the entire team and myself are very, very, very in tune into looking at, because we absolutely need to see that the organization taking the program has the capacity to implement the program with the fidelity that the program demands, with the guidelines that we have, the fidelity of the program, and that they measure. So location is critical. It's critical that it be an organization that is progressive. Progressive, I mean that if they do cuts, they do cuts in, in the right way or in no way, but that they don't just blindly do whatever. Progressive that they understand the impact of staff that are satisfied on outcomes. Progressive that they will take the issues like substance use to do VPGs or like to SLGBT that we did the VPG or the VPG to and systemic racism against black nurses. No other organization in Canada, except of RNO, and that's just a sad statement, would have done it. Comprehensive, that is a program that is comprehensive. You saw the three aspects of development, implementation, and evaluation. 
right? And each of those three pillars, cutting edge, critical. Because if not, you're using methodologies from whenever before that are not really what today should be. So cutting edge that we provide, we're always ahead of the curve. Accessible, free of charge. You know, it is not fair, it wouldn't be fair that a country as rich as Canada and a province as rich as Ontario with the resources that we have, both from government and, and from the association, 52,000 members we will end up this year, that we wouldn't be giving the program free of charge. Robust, that's the three pillars. Collective identity, all of you, that if you go to a conference and you go with the pin, a VPSO pin, you don't need to speak with the other person. You actually know already what you are all about because we have a collective identity and proven results. If we don't prove the results, the program is good for nothing. So we must, we must, we must continue to use the proven results. Um, this book, when I look, I am a bit embarrassed that we still give the book because it speaks about 850, I think, BPSOs. We have over 1,500, I think we have over 1,600 now. So it's a bit out of date, but it does give you, it's only from 2018, eh? but it gives you how fast we are progressing. And it gives you the ABCs of the program and the fundamentals of this program. I highly encourage you to have it. And yes, we have champions. But there is one I want to mention today. Heather, stand up, please. I want to mention this champion because Heather has been, Heather, what, 20? 22 years at RNO, started in a program, then became associate director for implementation, and then director for the last three years. And Heather, kudos to you for the tremendous, tremendous, tremendous work that you are doing. Stand up, guys. Absolutely stand up. Kudos, Heather. Kudos, Heather. I will do of all of them. I know, Heather. I can see that too. I almost took one of the pictures away. <laughs> so we are celebrating Heather at, in the, at the November board meeting. Uh, but I thought this is her last um, BPSO large meeting. So I wanted to make sure that, uh, that you are recognized by colleagues in the BPSO movement, Heather. Amazing, amazing work, amazing career, tremendous contributions. Jimmy Witch, thank you. Gracias, Heather, to you. Thank you to all of you. Take, take from your purses, and if you don't have a purse, take from wherever, a mirror. This is the last thing I will do. A mirror, any mirror. If, you don't, if not everybody has a mirror, share mirrors, please. I want you to look at yourself in that mirror. I want you to look at a mirror, so you will, we are going to wait here until we find enough mirrors and people, hey, you have a mirror here in your cameras, please, in your, in your uh, gadgets, a mirror, please, mirror, look at yourself, look at yourself, please take a picture of that champion. I want everybody to stand up, and I want Anu take a picture of people looking at the champions. Look at that mirror, please. Look at yourself. Take a picture. Stand up. Stand up. And I wish, Susan, we had the music, but we can sing it. We are the champions. Ta -da -da -da. 
We are the champions, la 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 la. Here you go, you are the champions. Thank you very much to all of you. And I think we have a break.